it's it's hard to know where all of this will end the reason that i bring this up is in this video what you're watching right here in the background this is this is a checkpoint in australia so there were some people who they didn't even test positive these people tested negative but because they were in proximity to other people who tested positive it wasn't even that these individuals had symptoms they just were near people who tested positive they put them in a covid concentration camp those kids escaped and so the police are out there doing checkpoints right they're out there looking in the back seats and they're checking the back of your trunk they want to see what you got in the payload in the back what's in that truck right and they want to, they're looking for those kids they're looking for these people and it's like I said pre in other previous videos, they, very similar things were done with the Jews, right? You're harboring any Jews under those staircases? What, what you got? What's in that basement? I want to see what's down there. Got any unvaccinated under the staircases? And that's basically the, you know, the area in which we are moving. Now, of course, a lot of this is taking place in countries where people don't have the ability to fight back right the australians gave away their guns now in america americans have guns but unfortunately we don't have revolutionaries that exist within the country unfortunately all we have left are conservatives and there's nothing to conserve about the american way of life it is an immoral unjust uh and this is what you're watching you're, you're basically just watching what is happening unfold within the country and it's just there's decades of going in the wrong going in the wrong direction. Now, now this is what's happening in Australia. Now, in America, this is what's happening. So this is Jim Cramer. And the other day he was on TV talking about and this is this is national television, right? This is MSNBC this is a financial uh, financial uh, broadcasting company. Yeah, don't, their, their job is to talk about the stock market and talk about investing. But he felt comfortable enough to say this. It's very important. This is on national television that this is what he is advocating for. Lord knows what happened if he didn't partake. But back then, anyone who refused to get vaccinated would get ratted out immediately because we knew that person could hurt other people. The commonweal was a, a commonweal. Now we're engaged in a similar struggle with COVID and Eisenhower would be aghast. We have immunocompromised people who are incubators for every variant to come, walking around lawfully unvaccinated? That's psychotic. We have companies that have tried hard to get people vaccinated and now backing down. We have governors who want to be president by grandstanding on a foolish state's right issue, the right to get sick and get other people sick. So it's time to admit that we have to go to war against COVID. Require vaccination universally. Have the military run it. If you don't want to get vaccinated, you better be ready to prove your conscientious objector status in court. And even then, you need to help in the war effort by staying home until we finally beat this thing. And that was basically his two cents that he wanted to interject. And it's important how comfortable people feel about forcing their fellow man to do things. He's like, hey, well, we'll just get the military involved, right? We'll just get people with guns to force vaccinate other individuals and then of course he goes on to state a very similar tactic that is already being utilized in australia where he said that if you don't if you want to be a conscientious objector then you need to feel comfortable being sequestered at home and of course it does it's not too far of a jump to say well we'll move you over here into this camp so we can concentrate you so that's for our safety as he says we need to go to war with COVID. Now, it's important. He's, he makes a statement where he says that these individuals feel comfortable walking around as incubators, right? For, for all sorts of variants. And this is how the mindset of what existed in Nazi Germany took place. I've done several videos talking about this that was one of the very first things that they utilized against the jewish people was these people spread typhus and then there was all these um propaganda pieces of uh, jews you know the jews with the big nose 
or they posted like a scary Jew hovering over, you know, a young child. And it was like, you know, German, German propaganda, you know, these people spread disease and all sorts of stuff like that. And that's where this sort of stuff comes from, comes from deep recesses in people who let their sinful inclinations get the better of them. They forget that we're supposed to show love towards our neighbor. And of course, they start to view their neighbor as incubators who can spread disease. And of course, we didn't have this mindset about the flu. Even when you had real diseases like Ebola, we didn't shut it all down and start force vaccinating people. But this is how comfortable that people feel, even on TV, even on national television, to the point where they feel comfortable, one, labeling these individuals. As he said, these, are, these words are chosen specifically to put seeds in the mind of the people. That I view my fellow man. Oh, he's an incubator of disease with all sorts of variants. I better, I better be careful because he might get me sick. Even though, of course, if you're vaccinated, right? But even to the point where people think that I've already taken a vaccine, but I can still get sick by this individual. That has never been the case in the history of vaccinations. Because when you are immune to a disease, you no longer can get the disease. But this has been the narrative for quite some time over the past couple of years. They've change the whole meaning of vaccination to there's no such thing as natural immunity and if you even think about how stupid that sounds and how does the vaccine work if there's no such thing as natural immunity well then how does the vaccine work because the vaccine works because of your immune system but your average dipshit normie it doesn't even think about this it doesn't even penetrate the brain that what they're saying doesn't even make sense from biological science but this is what and this is where we are. And this is how strong propaganda is, that it can just take the rational mind and the scientific mind and the mind that can observe observable reality and it just completely washes it away. That's why they call it brainwashing. That's why they call this tactic of what, um, of what the government is doing. They call it brainwashing because it scrubs everything out of your mind that should be rational and it updates it. Just like a computer system, right? Just like a computer system, you scrub the hard drive and then you re-implant what you want on that hard drive. And that's basically what brainwashing does. And that is what has been happening to nations where people feel comfortable enough regurgitating nonsense like this on national TV to the point where the Greek government said, for all of you people out there who are elderly and you don't want to you, you don't want to take it, we're going to fine you Greece to fine the elderly for every month that they remain unvaccinated. And this is how comfortable governments feel about imposing their will upon you. And what will people do? In times like this, in ancient times, the men of the nation knew what to do. They knew that it was time to rally together. We need to get together. We need to arm up and we need to put these individuals to death. It's not out of hatred for a race or color or ethnicity or background or religious or creed. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with you trying to impose your will by force upon other individuals. And as, as, I, as I have said in almost every one of my videos, when it comes to men and the way men work, when logic and reason fail, when we as men can no longer come to a logical agreement that either you will go your way and I will go my way and we will agree to disagree and move our own way and go our own way, if that doesn't work, then the only thing that remains is force the only thing that remains left is force because they feel comfortable utilizing force against you so you have to feel comfortable utilizing force against them protests don't work protests don't work you have to feel comfortable through the utilization of force under any other circumstance if your next door neighbor or the guy around the corner or a guy over in the neighboring uh, block came up to you and said, I'm going to fine you for every day. I don't see you with a vaccine card. You would tell him to mind his own business. And the moment he tried to enforce it, you would feel comfortable utilizing force. But since it's the government, since it's given this name and this title, it's this, this benevolent title, people look at it that way. This is literally the same thing that, uh, the Gestapo's did, or what? Uh, what do they refer to them as? Uh, oh my God, the, the, the name escapes me in, in American terms. Where they had, uh, 
like but the mobsters that's what i'm looking for this, this is the same thing that the mobsters would do right you got to pay your protection money in the way of forced vaccination that you t- pay for via taxation this is paid for via taxation this not free you pay for it in your taxes they force you to pay for this right for your protection and if you don't take it there's going to be other ramifications right we're going to find you if that doesn't work we're going to force to shut you down if that doesn't work we're going to throw you in a camp if that doesn't work then we're going to go the distance and this is where we're at so what are the men going to do this is why they've spent so many decades talking to and telling women and society, we don't need men. You don't need men. You women, you are strong and you are independent. You don't need no man. It is for this very moment. We are living in the fruition of what all those decades of pushing against the pushing against family, pushing up against the you know, men and women being married, husbands being heads over the families. It's for this very moment that we're living in right now where governments feel so comfortable because they realize there's no man in the home. The men aren't going to fight back. They feel comfortable doing this. Get up, roll up your sleeve or get up against the wall. And those are going to be your choices. Eventually, we will get to that point because there are going to be people that are going to be like, you know what? I'll die before I go this route. And that's where they're going to take it. Eventually, they'll motivate the crowd. It's like the Bible says that the the the, the sea in the Bible is represented or is a representation of wicked people. And the Bible says when the sea starts to churn, people in positions of a store of authority will just do what the sea tells them to do, and eventually the people will call for your death. Now, before that time comes, you should be prepared. You should have an exit strategy. You should be building communities. You should be arming up to protect yourself because this is where we're at. And if you wait too long, you'll have nowhere to go. See, at least the Jews in the beginning were smart. There were some Jews during the night of broken glass that were like, you know what? We need to flee. We need to leave behind our home or what we called our home. And we need to build a home someplace else. And when the night of broken glass came, there were a bunch of them that up and left. And then there were the remaining ones who realized, you know what? We don't even have time to sell our stuff. We need to leave it all behind and we need to go. And then there were those who were going to fight and we're going to fight and die. And that's exactly what they did. And then there were the remaining ones who were the ones that went into the ovens. And that's how things go. It has always been that way. When the community, when society doesn't stand up against tyrants, the result is that people feel comfortable enough. I mean, you don't think there were doctors during Nazi Germany? You don't think that there were nurses that saw what was going on and everybody just kind of stayed quiet, hoping somebody else was going to do the right thing? And then no one did the right thing? And then it just went further and further before doctors were doing experiments on people? Like you, you look at you look upon these people. Oh, it's a doctor. He's a he's a benevolent being. Oh, it's a it's a nurse. It's a person who's you know that's a great field. You must be a good person. You must be a good person at heart. It's like no. That doesn't mean it. But this is where we're at. And if the men don't choose to stand up, it will continue to get worse. It will continue to get worse. If people already feel comfortable enough to sit here and say. We need to get the military involved. If people feel comfortable enough looking at their fellow men, you're a spreader of disease. And we need to either force vaccinate you or we need to sequester you somewhere. If people feel comfortable enough, if governments feel comfortable enough, that we need to set up checkpoints because you escaped from a quarantine camp. You'll read the article. I'll post the article. You can read the article right here. These kids, they didn't even test positive. They weren't even symptomatic. They came in contact with somebody that was. And they felt comfortable off and they say, you need to go into a camp. You need to quarantine. This is where we're at. But what are the men going to do? I don't expect the women to do anything, but I do expect the men to do something. Because the women, women are just spoils of war. Women and children are just spoils of war. In war, it's the responsibility of the men to stand up and fight. And if the men aren't, you're just going to get more of this. Where will we be in a year from now? If this is what is comfortable, if people feel comfortable just letting this happen and people feel comfortable enough 
talking about this stuff on national TV. And if people feel comfortable enough that if you're an elderly person and you don't take it, we're going to find you $114 every day in grace. That's a lot of money for an elderly person. Typically, most of these people are on fixed incomes. And yet the Bible says that our responsibility is to look after these people. But if we don't, then who will? If we don't do it, then who will? If we don't speak about it and if we don't take action, who will? No one is coming to save you. You have to be willing to save yourself. And you have to be willing to get with like-minded individuals who will do what is necessary. It is not out of any sort of hatred. It is out of necessity that men need to rise up. Because the outcome will be, it will just continue to get worse until we get right back into what happened 100 years ago where they were openly sterilizing people on TV. They were real, they were like if you were born with any sort of defect they did the same thing in America. They openly sterilized people in America. They were openly doing experiments in Germany. And if people feel if no one stands up and the only way that it ended is because people had to die. That's the only reason that what happened in the 1900s stopped was because the men realized we need to put these people to death. And we are living in the same time period now. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts below. Feel free, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll check you out next time.